it's Ariel from Seattle Coffee Gear, and today we're doing another kind of back to basics video. So I'm going to walk you through how to make a pour over. In this case, we are going to be using the Hario V60. Now I do prefer the white filters as opposed to the natural ones, just because the white filters, um, they don't have a papery flavor or fragrance, so you tend to get a more pure coffee flavor from these filters. And just a little tip, I do like to fold it at the seam here just so it fits a little bit better in the pour over cone. And I also like to use kind of a 1 to 15 to a 1 to 17 ratio depending on the age of the coffee and also the the roast level. If you want a more assertive coffee flavor, then you would use a one to 15. If you're kind of wanting something a bit more mellow and delicate, then you would use a one to 16 or a one to 17 ratio. Um, in here, I've ground about 24, no, 25 grams of coffee. And we are using Mother Tongue's Peru right now. And I ground it in the Barazza Virtuoso. And for V60, I like to use the 18 setting, so it's kind of a medium fine grind as opposed to medium coarse, which would, you would use for something like a Chemex. Um, and that just allows for a slightly longer time for the coffee to extract when the water hits it. Um, and you want to make sure that, you know, as you're grinding, you kind of like tap the grinder um, just to kind of make sure everything gets out evenly. And as far as that goes, I also set it to 30 seconds because that's about as long as it takes to grind 25 grams of coffee. So I'm going to go ahead and set this little guy down on our scale. And one thing I like to do both to preheat the pour over cone as well as the serving vessel is I actually do like to give it a rinse. Just a quick one. And it does help um, kind of clear away any loose paper fibers, but it will also add some heat to the pour over cone as well as to the serving vessel. Uh, and that is important just so the temperature kind of stays a bit more consistent as you're brewing, which will give you a more consistent flavor. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and pour in my coffee. And you want to make sure that the bed is, you know, good and flat, or as flat as you can get it. And we're just going to empty this into here. If you're at home, you can just empty it into your sink. And then I'm going to zero it out. And since we're doing a one to 15 ratio, I'm going to stop brewing when the scale reads 375. So first, we're going to do something called blooming the coffee. So you're just going to pour a little bit in and start your timer. And you are going to basically just get the grounds saturated. And you're going to let that sit for anywhere between 30 to 45 seconds, depending on how freshly roasted the coffee is. If it's just been roasted a few days ago, then you definitely want to give it 45 seconds to allow that CO2 gas to kind of escape because it does not really create a good flavor. So you want to give it time to kind of vent, if you will. So it's been 30 seconds. So I'm going to go in and actually start pouring. So this is what we're calling our second pulse, essentially. So I am going to pour until we're about halfway to 375. Okay, and now I'm going to stop. We're going to let this drain down almost completely. I'd say about three quarters of the way down, and then we're going to go back in and finish our pour. 
Um, so that just gives the coffee time to extract and get happy in there essentially. I'm going to go back in and finish my pour and if you notice I am pouring in concentric circles and I am trying to keep the rate at which the water is coming out as steady as possible. Now this kettle is pretty useful for that. Um, you know it's just really comfortable to hold in the hand and the Akaya Pearl is also um, very helpful with that as well just because it is showing me my flow rate. So now I'm just going to taper it off. All right, we are at 375. So now I'm going to let it finish brewing. And as it gets towards the bottom, I do kind of like to give it a little swirl just to give it a little bit of extra agitation. And we're going to let it draw down and finish its thing. This is definitely something that requires patience. Uh, so, you know, you just kind of have to sit and breathe while it's brewing. Alrighty, and you can see that this brew method, it definitely does give you kind of a lighter coffee. It's more tea-like in body. You can see it's pretty clear. That's one of the nice things about the V60 and other paper filter methods is it does pull those oils out so you get a much cleaner tasting cup. It's a very light, almost tea-like body. Another thing I like too is it tends to pull out some of the more delicate notes, which is great. It's got a soft mouthfeel. Um, definitely have like that nice pecan note that this coffee has. And then the, the orange blossom note, it's an interesting sensation. It happens on the back of your tongue and then it hits your nose. So it's definitely a very delicate uh, flavor sensation, but V60 is probably one of my favorite ways to make a pour over. Um, but thank you for joining me. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe. Leave a comment below. And if you have any questions, please feel free to post them there as well. We'll see you next time, guys. Okay.